Hi, welcome to the Country Lifestyle. I'm Eric. Today we're going to show you how to clean a fish utilizing the Canadian filleting technique. It's really quite simple. Uh, what we have here is a calico bass, also known as a black crappie. Uh, this is a panfish. Uh, we, had, we went out this morning and captured this little guy and we're going to fillet him up and later on we're going to cook him. So, but first of all I just wanted to show you what I've done here. I've immediately after capturing this fish, I went ahead and gutted it and cleaned out the internal cavity. It's the first thing you want to do. Uh, that, that actually helps keep, uh, keep the fish fresh tasting. I always gut the fish uh, immediately after capture. Now you can wait, uh, as long as you've got the fish on ice, you can wait you know, a few, three, four hours, but generally as a rule, I, I prefer to gut the fish as soon as I capture it, within an hour or so. So as long as you're close, you'll, you're, you're fine. Now, First thing you want to make sure is you have a sharp knife. Using a six inch Rapala filet knife. This is a deburring tool. I'm just simply cleaning out the edge, making sure I've got a nice razor sharp blade to work with. Now, what I do is I take the fish, I turn it upside down, and you're going to be cutting on a diagonal. So I just simply take the knife blade, pull the pectoral fin over, and I find the gill cover. Now, this is the diagonal cut that I'm talking about. You notice I'm not cutting straight across, square across. I'm cutting at a diagonal like this. The reason for that is there's a lot of meat right up here, right on top of the head, and you want to utilize all this meat. This is a panfish, uh, you know, about three quarters of a pound. There's plenty of meat on here. But this is, a, this is the perfect type of fish to utilize the Canadian filleting method because it utilizes the greatest amount of flesh. You'll see when we're done, we'll show you what the bone looks like and you, you literally take every bit of meat off the bone so you get to utilize the, most, the best part of the fish which is coming up here. Now look at, you want to just start your cut. Now you'll notice how I've got this cut right above the head just past the gill cover. You want to go down as far until you feel the bone. That's the back spine here. And you don't want to go all the way through at this point. You just want to come down. I'm going to, go, I'm going to do this very slowly so you can follow along here. Now you'll notice I've opened up the cavity as you can see it's cleaned out. Now you take the fish, you turn it around so that it's the, the, the head of the fish is facing towards you. Now, I'm going to take the knife blade. This is the, this is the most important part because this is where you're going to start your cut and you're going to follow it all the way down the backbone right to the tail. Simply insert the blade. Now, I've got the blade away from me, you'll notice. Not in this way, but this way. Okay? Go right in. Now, you're going to lift the knife tip straight through the back just like that. I've started my cut, as you can see. Now, I'm just simply going to take, now this uh, uh, calico bass, they have a nice soft skin. You can actually feel the knife blade working all the way down under the skin. It basically just cuts just like butter. Now you're just going to run your knife right along the spine here, right under the skin. You can see that I'm not, I don't have the knife the knife inserted into the fish very far. I'm just running it along. All you're doing is you're breaking the skin free. That's the first thing you want to do. You break the skin free and you just follow it. Notice I got that knife upside down and it just runs. This is very simple to do. It's going to take you a few times before you get the hang of it, but when you go out and catch a mess of crappie like this, before before you get to the last one you'll be a you'll be an expert. Just keep running that along the spine. You want to go right to the tail and out. It's that simple. Now, you can see where I've separated the skin from the meat and the meat from the bone. I've started to, I've started to separate the meat from the bone. Now, I'm going to get my thumb between the spine and the flesh and I'm simply going to scrape with the knife tip. Now, as you're scraping with the knife tip, you're going to feel the spine itself and you're going to feel the small bones right up until you get to the rib cage. See how I'm just following that knife tip right down along the edge? And I'm going to see if you can see this. 
you notice the spine and the bones are right there, they're right along the edge. You can actually hear it. And I'm going to keep running that knife tip. You don't want to, this is, this is, you make sure you have a, a sharp tip. You want to just go very, very lightly. It doesn't take much. The flesh is very soft. Now I'm going to go the opposite direction, work my way towards the tail. Don't try to rush this, especially your first time, because you'll probably end up making a mess of it, and uh, then it's hard to, it, it's really hard to correct after that. So you just keep running that tip right along the spine. Now, I've just about exposed the spine. I've come down, I've come down as far as I can go in that direction. Now, I'm going to turn the knife back in the, in the other direction again. You're going to insert the tip and make sure that you get just over the spine and you're going to simply push right out the other side right to where the right to where you see this fin right here where it begins knife tips going to come right out there and then with one swoop backwards just like that so it's in and one cut just up and away from you that'll lift the meat right off the bone now at this point there's two things you can do personally I like to just go right in and you'll cut those little pin bones. You cut right through them. With a sharp knife, there should not be any problem. If you need to stop and resharpen, that's fine. It's best to start out with a sharp blade, that way you don't have to stop. You should easily be able to fillet uh, half a dozen fish without the need to go back to your deburring tool or another type of knife sharpener. Now you see I've got the the meat, the fillet, pull back away from the rib cage. There's some rib bones right in here. You're just simply going to take. Now you want to be careful with this. It's not a bad idea to take a towel to protect your hand. Personally, I don't use it because I've done so many of these. I basically do them in my sleep. But you might want to use a rag. So I'm going to show you. Just take, cover the head, lift with your thumb, go right in. Now these bones, again, they're very, uh, very delicate. A sharp knife blade to go right through them. As you can see, it's not a problem. And there's your fillet. Both sides. You do this, the same thing to the other side. Lift that pectoral fin with one hand. Start now. You don't have to. You don't have to hold on to it the whole time. But you just want to lift it away. Make sure you get a good diagonal cut. You want to start. You. It's almost at a 45 degree angle. Not this. Not square because you've got all this meat up here, right over the top of the head and the upper back area. This is all meated here, so you don't want to waste that. That's exactly why we come to the side. Now, you're not wasting any meat here because you're into the rib cage. This particular species of fish is perfectly suited for the Canadian filleting method. Take, and you want to actually run the knife just a little bit underneath the gill plate. Again, here's the gill plate right here. As you can see, I'm lifting it up. There's the gills exposed. Okay, diagonal cut. Just till you get to the backbone. Don't go any farther, otherwise you'll it'll be difficult to correct. So I've made that cut just like I did the other side. Now once again, the tip right in above the backbone, and I can feel it with my knife blade. After, like I say, after you do a few of these, you'll be able to improve on them dramatically. The, the more you do, the better you get.